Okay, we'll be good. Can we come out? I, I know a lot of flight attendants that watch this channel that would love to be able to lock us in the flight deck. Aviation Memes Part 4, coming up. Hey 7-4 crew, welcome back. If you don't know me, my name's Kelsey. I'm a 747 pilot. My channel 7-4 Gear is all about aviation. Today I'm here in downtown Anchorage, Alaska, and this is the view from my hotel room. It seems a lot of you in the 7-4 crew love these aviation memes because you keep sending them to my Instagram. And if you keep sending them, I'll keep making them. And it's been a few months and I probably have enough to make two meme videos, but today we're gonna keep it short and we're only gonna do one. Let's get into it. First day of flight school, last day of flight school. I know these baby Yoda memes were huge. Truthfully, I don't know if this would be like last day of flight school. Maybe it would be like your last day of being an instructor at a flight school. Those guys seem to be a bit worn after teaching 1,250 hours or 800 hours or whatever you need to finish. I don't know if after flight school you're quite Yoda. Types of headaches, migraine, hypertension, stress, taxing at ORD. So ORD, that's Chicago, and actually this is crazy. Just the other day, I was riding as a passenger on a flight and the woman sitting next to me worked for the FAA Air Traffic Control. And actually, we were talking specifically about Chicago. The reason Chicago is a bit tricky, it's different than most airports. If you're a pilot, you've flown in them before, you know that what they do is they just keep telling people what to do without asking for a callback or a readback. So you just have to listen to your call sign and then just start doing that thing without reading it back. If they give you a break at the end of what they say, then you read it back. It's a little bit different than most every other airport that I've flown into. Truthfully, it's not that difficult once you get the hang of it and really like the number one rule of Chicago, which is ORD, the number one rule is don't stop moving. If you stop moving, they'll get really upset. So you just kind of keep it rolling at least forward. And if they want to change the direction because you're doing something wrong, they'll tell you to go somewhere else. Oh good, there's a free breakfast. <laughs> if you're a flight crew, you know that it's always about free breakfast. I remember specifically at the regionals, we would specifically bid for overnights that had free breakfast. I don't know why, but it just made my day. And we would always go out and you'd show up and you'd check in at the front desk. One of my early questions when I was checking at the front desk would always be, so what's the breakfast situation like? because I want to know if there's a free breakfast. And truthfully, there'd be times where I would skip lunch because I would eat so much at breakfast that I wasn't even hungry at lunchtime. Especially when you're new, starting off in your career, you're trying to save as much money as you can. So free breakfast is always important. In fact, I ate a free breakfast this morning and I loved it. Oh my God, you're so lucky. You get to see the world. The world. <laughs> That's... That's pretty accurate, as this channel shows. Uh, everywhere that I'm going in the world, a lot of the times I'm here in the hotels. And it's cool, I do get to see a lot of the world, and fortunately, sometimes I don't make videos when I'm in really cool places in the world because I'm out running around checking those things out. As you saw at the beginning of this video, it is very cold and snowy outside, so I'm not trying to spend any extra time walking around Anchorage. I've been here a lot of times. But if you follow me on my Instagram, you'll usually you'll see in those stories when I'm going somewhere cool and I'll post up stories of different places that I'm at when I have a chance. But when I'm in a cool hotel somewhere in the world, I'll try to film. But a lot of times I'm just excited to go out and explore that city if I've never been there before. You told me you had a lot of money invested. Yeah, in flight training. <laughs> It's true, going through flight school right now is super expensive. I found it expensive for me. When I talk to some of the old captains I fly with, they're like, oh yeah, flight school is like, what, two, $3,000? I'm like, yeah, in the 70s. It, it's definitely something that's expensive. But if you watch some of those videos that I did, I think it's a great career to be in. It fits me and my personality really well. It's something that I really enjoy doing and I enjoy getting paid to go around the world. So for me, it's a really good fit. And, and the pay is great, but it is definitely a struggle the first several years. Any pilot will tell you that. It's been difficult right now. It's probably the best it's ever been. That may change in the future, but there's definitely a massive pilot shortage for sure. I made a video about that maybe a year or two ago. So it is uh, definitely something to get into, but it is expensive, so I understand. I can't imagine how glamorous flying will be in the future. The future. <laughs> Something that's really funny is that I've seen some of these Instagram accounts like Passenger Saming and they show some of the crazy things that passengers do. I know that as a passenger when I'm flying in uniform, 
people usually are more respectful around me and I notice that they don't act and do stupid things. Especially if they see that I'm sitting in front of them or next to them, they'll be a lot more respectful than if I was in regular civilian clothes. It's true that it has gotten a little bit out of control compared to what it should be. In that Hollywood versus reality I did in Castaway, I talked about not taking off your shoes and socks. But based on what I've seen as I fly around every day, I still see people do that. I don't put that stuff on my Instagram. I don't post that stuff when I see people doing it because that's not really my place and I feel a little bit bad shaming people on how they act and their manners. That's not really my job. But there are a lot of accounts out there that love doing that. Me on my last day of reserve, cruise scheduling. <laughs> now, if you don't know what reserve means, it's basically where you'll have a few different types, but one of them will be where you're at home, another one might be at a hotel, and usually on your last day or two, you're just thinking, okay, I'm almost done and I'm about to go home. But what they're saying in this meme is that as soon as you're thinking you're about to go home, cruise scheduling will call you up and go, oh no, it's time to go to work. Now, of course, I have a lot of schedulers that watch my channel that work at my airline, and so I love you guys, so of course, if you were gonna call me to go on a trip, you would put me on something super awesome, but for other people, this definitely might apply. When ATC talks too fast, can you repeat the part of the stuff where you said all about the things? <laughs> I have a lot of ATC controllers that watch this channel as well, and I will say that I've landed at places that are very busy airports. Let's take New York as an example. I've landed and if I haven't flown there a lot, they might tell me three or four things very fast and expect me to know their airport as well as they know their airport. And unfortunately, that's just not the world that I live in. But there was a time, I remember back at the regionals, I was in LaGuardia and I was a brand new first officer and I called for a clearance and they had to give us a full new clearance of where we were gonna go. So there's a lot of different things I had to write down while they were talking. And the person that was giving me the clearance was reading it back so fast because they had it all printed off. I'm having to write it down and listen to what they're saying as far as spelling, numbers, everything like that. I'm having to write it all down really quickly. And at the end of it, I looked over at the captain. I was like, did you get that? He goes, yeah, maybe like half of it. So I called back and I got them and I said in a really slow voice, I write about as fast as I talk. So we can do it three or four times or you can give it once to me real, real slow. And you could tell they were irritated, but they read it back nice and slow. The reality is, it's like I always tell the pilots out there, air traffic control is there to help you. So if you don't understand it, it's better to clarify it. And at the end of the day, you might ask them for it three or four times, but if you get it clear, you're not gonna have any problems. If you make an assumption, you can get into a lot of trouble, especially when you're flying out of places like JFK and New York, that area, or Washington DC. It's always better to ask two or three times and get it right than take a guess and be wrong. In my defense, the flight attendant said, please familiarize yourself with all the safety features aboard the aircraft. <laughs> I, I remember seeing this a while back on the news and I don't know if this is real or how this happened, but it's true, we have life rafts on board the aircraft. I don't know how you would get that to actually deploy inside the aircraft, but, and it would probably cause a lot of damage because there's a lot of pressure in those CO2 canisters to inflate those rafts as fast as possible so people can safely get on them in the situation of a water landing. I remember one of the earlier meme videos I talked about some flight attendants accidentally blowing a slide. I remember I was doing a walk around and they accidentally forgot to disarm the door and when they opened the door, I see this huge slide shoot out and I looked over and I thought, oh man. And I could see both the flight attendants up there had this look on their face. All I was thinking was, man, I hope they're not on probation. But it was really kind of a crazy situation for me to see and I can assure you that neither of those two flight attendants will ever make that mistake again. Passengers talking to the flight attendants, passengers talking to the pilots. I know that flight attendants always say this to me, they're always like, but the passengers are always so nice to you. And honestly, it's true. So something that I did when I always flew passengers and even now when I'm flying passengers is I like to stand if I'm not flying or if I have a minute and I've done all my pilot duties, I like to stand and be there as people walk on the plane for two reasons. One, I'm there to see anything, to back up the flight attendants. If somebody shows up on the plane drunk or they're acting stupid or things like that and that still happens today, I like to be there because it sets a totally different tone. If you as the pilot say something to a passenger, then what a flight attendant will say to them. And it also makes it kind of a cool experience for them as they're coming on board. 
If you're on a single floor aircraft where the kids would come on, they'd look at you and you could kind of tell if the kids wanted to see inside the flight deck. So being there, they don't have to intrude or ask the flight attendant and the kids can just look at you and go, you can see them kind of looking past you to look inside the flight deck and I go, come on and let's check it out. Obviously on my plane, that doesn't work right now and I don't really fly a lot of kids now, but it is definitely something you should do or consider doing if you're a pilot is stand up there and talk with the flight attendants while they're doing their stuff and just be there to greet the passengers. It makes it for setting a good tone for them. It makes them feel comfortable. It allows them to see the pilots. If you're a nervous flyer, I know that I've had friends that are nervous flyers. They really like to be able to see the pilots and see, hey, they're a real person. They look aware of what's going on. They don't look like Denzel from flight. Those things really puts people at ease. It helps your flight attendants out. And if somebody shows up and is acting stupid or out of control, you're there to back up your flight attendant. So that's why I always did it. When the plane's almost full and you see someone smoking hot walk down the aisle. <laughs> I, wish, I wish I looked that good. Uh, I don't know if you know this, uh, Southwest, how it works when you board on a Southwest aircraft, and I've jump seated on them a few times, and as far as airlines go, they are some of the nicest crews to pilots. They are really great to jump seat on. How it works on Southwest is that you board and you sit in whatever seat you want and anybody can sit next to you. And I'm kind of guessing that's what this baby is doing. Uh, he's sitting in that seat. I've had it happen where I show up and I'm in civilian clothes and I'm just a regular paying passenger and I go and I sit down and you see some super hot girl walking down the aisle and you're thinking, please sit next to me. And of course, they always go and sit three or four rows back and I get some guy who looks like he's a lumberjack and he's like, oh, last seat, I'll just sit in the middle. Yeah, great, fantastic. But it is definitely funny to see you can see people especially on something like southwest you can see people as somebody attractive gets on the plane man or woman you can kind of see people kind of get get ready maybe sit up a little bit more in their seat than they normally would someone else who has a lot of swag when it comes to aircraft is frank from catch me if you can if you haven't seen the hollywood versus reality that i did on catch me if you can i'll put a link to it right here i look forward to hearing from you until then keep the blue side up